Hey you guys and welcome back to my channel. So if you're new here, my name is Yvette. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button, girl. So I wanted to do a video of pretty much... How can I say? Because I'm not giving information. I'm just giving my true perspective of life now ever since I have had twins. If you have never watched any of my videos, one thing that I take pride in is that I'm going to always keep it real. I'm going to always keep it honest. I'm not one of those mothers that sit here and try to make it be like, oh my gosh, having twins is such a blessing. Oh my gosh. It's like the greatest thing on earth. Oh my gosh, two baby. No, I'm not that person. Okay. I'm not that person at all. And I did want it to be kind of like a chill vibe. I wanted to have me some wine here, but if I'm being honest, Listen, y'all, I've been trying to film this video for days now, days now. But every time that I say that I'm going to fill it at nighttime with a glass of wine where it's chill and the twins are asleep, I be tired. I be tired and I go to sleep with them. So I'm filming this video in the middle of the day. It's like 3 p.m. now and the twins are upstairs. I have a camera on them, so I'm able to see what's going on. But they are up. They were taking a nap. When they were taking a nap, I got myself together to do this video, and now they're up. Thankfully, they're quiet. So, I definitely also had to um, write down write down exactly what different topics I wanted to talk about. Because if I didn't, I felt like I would be sitting here on this couch like... <laughs> Okay, we're not doing that today. I, I don't plan on crying today, but if I cry, I cry, okay? I'm sensitive, I'm emotional. Well, I hate to say the word sensitive. I'm not sensitive, I'm emotional. And a lot of the times when I start talking about something that means a lot to me, it triggers emotions. So if I cry, I cry. I'm sorry for anybody that don't like to see somebody cry, but I'm a crier, okay? So now that we got that out the way, I want to tell y'all what topics I'm going to be talking about and in what order. I do want to talk about my pregnancy, a, touch a little bit on the labor, the newborn stage, my mental health, my relationship after the twins, my current stage. So I don't want this video to be too, too long, but if it is long, I'm sorry, y'all. It's a lot. It is a lot, okay? You know, I'm, I'm going to be very relaxed because I want it to be like me and you just having a conversation, even though I'm in here talking to myself. Let's talk about the pregnancy stage. So if you have not already watched the video of me telling the story of how I found out I was having twins, go ahead and watch that. And that will give a little insight on how I found out, how I felt in that moment, all of those things, y'all. I cried in that video also. Okay, I cried in that video. So during my pregnancy though, I have to be honest, I had one of the smoothest selling pregnancies Honestly, none of my pregnancies that I have had were ever like any health concerns. But when I did find out that I was pregnant with twins and I was doing research online, I know a lot of the times when you are pregnant with multiples, those can that can um, increase your chances of having health concerns. But I was blessed throughout my entire pregnancy. I didn't have any health concerns. Um, my partner, he was so, he just did everything that he was supposed to do and yeah i just had a, a great pregnancy um even my doctor was shocked because she thought once i got to a certain point like in my 30 week range that i would get like high blood pressure or something something to make her um induce me but i never had nothing um now when you are pregnant with twins i can't speak for every doctor but i know from what my doctor told me is that Usually she does not allow you to go past 38 weeks because the longer you have twins inside of your belly, it increases the chances of still for the baby to be stillborn or both of them. So they try to, they, they usually have you have the twins earlier. Um, I had my twins at 37 weeks. I could have went to the 38 week range because I didn't have any health concerns at all. But if you watch my postpartum video, I let y'all know that I had bad hemorrhoids. I know that it's so nasty, okay? I know it's nasty, but it is what it is. I had bad hemorrhoids that had me crying, literally tears coming down of my eyes, crying. 
And I just couldn't take it no more. And when I called the doctor, she was saying, you know, Yvette, the only way that you're able to get rid of these hemorrhoids is if you go into labor. Because baby A, which is Kehlani, which is the girl, she was putting so much pressure down on my pelvis that it was creating me to have hemorrhoids. Um, another thing that I really experienced when I was pregnant was that if I was doing a lot of walking, you guys, like right here hurt so bad it hurt so bad to the point where i had to literally be like in fetal position in the bed and i could not move my legs because it hurt so bad from walking um so i did have a lot of pain when it came to like walking and anything like that once i got you know more bigger in my pregnancy but other than that you know, it was no health concerns. And honestly, anytime somebody was to ask me, you know, um, what are you having? They were always surprised that I would say twins because I didn't really look like I was pregnant with twins. So I didn't have any health concerns when it came down to my pregnancy, you guys. I, I really, like, I had a very breezy pregnancy. Now, when it came to the labor, I do also have a labor and delivery vlog, but at, I never really sat down and talked about like in detail what happened after um the labor the labor was one of the easiest i have had out of all of my kids and you would think having twins it wouldn't be that way but it was i went into labor and delivery i believe it was around like 7 a.m and i ended up having the twins at around 6 p.m at night and it wasn't an issue for me to get the 10 centimeters they were really pressuring me to get the epidural, even though I kind of dragged it out longer than what I wouldn't say that they wanted me to because it was my choice of when I wanted to get it. But she was like, Yvette, you don't have to go through this pain. Like you can get the epidural, but I wanted to go as long as, as I just wanted to go out as far as I can um, from having the epidural. Even after I had the epidural, though, I still felt. I felt the contractions, but not to the point where it was hurting. I kind of felt the pressure from it. So that kind of scared me because I thought when it came down to me actually pushing the twins out, I was going to feel it and I didn't want to feel nothing. So I kept telling the doctor like, yo, I feel something. She was just saying, you know, you don't want to absolutely not feel anything because when it come down to you pushing, then you might have a problem with pushing because you won't feel what you're doing. So I'm kind of glad she allowed me to, you know, that she broke it down to me like that. Because when it came down to pushing you guys, that was the easiest, like, they came out so quick. I was so surprised. They came out so quick to the point where the nurses that were with me all day, by the time it was time for me to push and I got the 10 centimeters, their shift was over. So they were telling me, you know, Yvette, we're, we're sorry that we were with you all this time. And now you're going to have to have new nurses that actually be there for after the delivery. But our shift is over and we don't know how long it's going to take for you to push out. But she said, we're going to walk you down to the delivery room and then we're just going to transition it over to the other nurses. Y'all, I pushed them out so quick that they were still there. Like, they weren't even ready to take the twins. That's how quick it was. Like, they were scrambling because they came out so quick. So, I pushed Kehlani out first, and then I pushed Khalil out. When Kehlani came out, I was really scared, y'all, because she was not crying, and they were, like, beating on her back. But they said that she had... The umbilical cord was wrapped around her neck, but not to the point where it was so tight where, you know, she... Um, wasn't breathing and then I think they said she had some fluid in her lungs or something like that so they were trying to get it out of her and get her to breathe which that scared me so much y'all like for her to come out first and I'm sitting here thinking something wrong with my baby and then I still have to focus on pushing Khalil out which is the boy oh I was so like it, my emotions was just all over the place but good thing my doctor she was definitely there telling me like you know it's okay she was reassuring me that everything is okay um so it was no one of the concerns that she had was that if I pushed Kehlani out first that she didn't she didn't know if Khalil was going to go head down which could have resulted to me having a c-section but luckily as soon as Kehlani came out Khalil went head down and I was able to push him out 
So I am so grateful. I am so grateful that my labor and, del and, and delivery went like that because I was, y'all, and this is nothing against anybody that has had a succession because really the ultimate goal is to get the babies out safely. But I was so scared to have a C-section. I was so scared. And like most of the time when you're having twins, a lot of the times you have to have a C-section. So I was just glad that I was able to push them out naturally. Um, when I say naturally, I mean vaginally, like, you know, the, the natural way. And even when I had to go to the doctor recently, the doctor was like, okay, so you had twins, C-section. I was like, ah vaginal oh you had a vaginal yes baby i pushed them out so i am very proud that i was able to push them out because i just was so scared to have a c-section y'all but um yeah i pushed them out and then it just was all like smooth selling it really was and i'm mad because in my labor and delivery vlog i really wasn't able to show you guys me pushing because when you're having twins they do set you up i'm sorry i keep messing with my hair because it just looked I just had to throw this wig on y'all so I can get this video recorded before the twins cry. So, um, I'm mad because they take you in the C-section room since you're having twins. Because like I said, most of the time when you're having twins, you do have to have a C-section. And they put me in the C-section room so they can be prepared. So my doctor was like, Yvette, you know, I know you're pushing out, but we just want to be prepared just in case you do have to have a C-section. So I was already in the C-section room. They didn't let me take nothing with me other than me and my mask. I didn't even have like my phone or nothing. Like their dad recorded that clip that y'all saw as far as them coming out. I mean, not coming out, but you know, them crying and stuff. So yeah, so I didn't get to really record that. Well, I didn't get to record that at all, but that's the reason why. Um, as far as like once they were here, that was kind of, a struggle in the hospital I really won't say it was too much of a struggle but you know we are in a pandemic so the nursery is closed so the twins never went to the nursery the only break that I had from them was when they would take Khalil to go get circumcised or when they were giving them their first bath like they were like you know we can either give them a bath in the room or we can take them out and and the lady she was like let's just you know we're gonna take them out so you can get a little break so even though they were allowing me to get breaks, for some reason, I just couldn't sleep. I just couldn't sleep comfortably because they kept coming in, kept coming in. Like every time I would get some sleep, here they go coming in. So that was the case with that. And then as far as how I felt after, I had the best healing process also. Um, I did tear, but my doctor didn't cut me. She let me tear naturally. So with that, she said I didn't, cut, I didn't tear a lot. So that process wasn't bad, which from my previous experiences, that was the worst thing. Y'all, if you have ever gotten cut vaginally, oh my gosh. And then it's like anytime you cough, sneeze, laugh, anything, it hurts. It hurts so bad. So I'm glad that I didn't really have to go through that pain. Um, and I'm just glad that I did I wasn't in too much pain anyway, because you know, I'm having twins, like I can't be down you know what i'm saying like even though their dad was there this is his first time having twins also so it's like you know of course he needed my help and it's just like it's just i'm just glad that that process was smooth selling everything happens for a reason i feel like that was the reason that everything happened the way that it did because i knew that if i was down you know it would have been really stressful because having twins y'all so now that we got the pregnancy and the um, labor out the way, let's talk about the newborn stage. So as far as the newborn stage, now that I look back, that was probably, hmm, I'm not going to say it was the worst stage because I don't know yet. You know, I don't know yet. It might be my stages to come that are the worst stages as far as the newborn stage that was i'll just say that was really a transition it was a transition because at that time the twins literally were waking up every two to three hours on the dots okay every two to three hours and they weren't necessarily on the same schedule so 
at one point it was me waking up every hour and Kaylani, which is the girl, I keep saying it's Kaylani and Khalil, y'all. Kaylani is the girl, Khalil is the boy. So when I say their name, so y'all can know who I'm talking about. Um, Kaylani, she was a crier. She would just cry and cry and cry. And I even asked the doctor, like, yo, it's not wrong with her. Because <laughs> like she just cries so much. And I just, oh Lord, it's just she cries so much. So that made it hard because she was always crying and then Khalil was more of the chill one. He didn't cry. He barely opened his eyes. He was sleep all the time. Kaylani, she was more of a more observant baby, which she is the, still the same way now. Even leaving the hospital, if you watch when I was um my uh taking twin home, I, I forgot what the name of the video is, but pretty much like leaving the hospital with twins. Um, when I showed them she, her eyes was wide open looking around so she always been that way so you know Khalil he kind of was more chill um, it was a struggle as far as like me giving them their first bath I remember I cried I had tears in my eyes because that was a struggle you know it was their first time getting baths they were crying so bad they were crying so bad and um, just you know when they're newborns they're so like small and Khalil you know they're they both were in preemie clothes so they were so small and fragile to me that I was like scared to mishandle them handle them in any way so that was kind of a struggle um even taking them up and down the stairs having to take one well at that time still to this day I carry them both down the stairs but at that time I would carry them like this um it just, it was really a transition, you guys, because it was something I never did before. I never had to care for twins, and I felt like around the clock, I was constantly doing something, changing diapers, uh, feeding them. Like, I just was always doing something, and it just was a transition. It really was, and it's like, I, I feel like I never really had a chance to, like, really deal with my postpartum because... I just felt like I always was doing something. And then on top of that, I have, you know, my two oldest. So I just was always doing something. And that was a bit of a struggle. And then at that time, I was living with my parents because my our house was getting built. So I didn't even have like a, a true setup. Even though I so appreciate my sister and my mom, they set the room up for us so that we can be as comfortable as possible so you know that I, I appreciated that um we did have like the playpen for twins felt like they were always waking up so it just it, it it just was a lot I'll say that it was a lot and I feel like you know with me still trying to heal and everything like that it just was a transition because like I said, when you're having twins, it's just like you always have something to do. And one of the advices that you might see a lot going around when it comes to newborn is sleep when they sleep. But see, this is the thing. If you sleep when they sleep, you're going to constantly always feel like you're doing something because you sleep when they're sleeping. And then when you're up, you're constantly doing something. So even with that, it's like you don't have any moment for to yourself like you don't have no moment to decompress and just get your thoughts together you know what i'm saying like it, i feel like it's so important to just have a moment to yourself and that is important and i feel like people sometimes don't understand that because they're like oh you decided to have kids and when you have kids there ain't no more you and all this listen if i'm not good they're not good so it is important to have time to yourself and i felt like i didn't have time to do anything anything I felt like I didn't have time to do nothing so my mom she tried to help me the best she could but my mom was still working so my mom and my sister they helped me the best that they could their dad was still working at the time he didn't take um paternity leave at that time because like I said I was living with my parents because our house was getting built so yeah so I think that's it as far as the newborn stage of how I felt it was kind of it was just a transition like I will say transitioning over to having twins whether you 
had one child before you having to it's just a transition so the littlest things that you might not even think about like even going into the grocery store it's like okay i do have a twin stroller but when i go in a grocery store where do i put the groceries so <laughs> so those are the little things that i can say it's just like oh it's just a transition okay so as far as my mental health lord let me not cry jesus honestly you guys and i have expressed this in some of my vlogs i feel like right now currently right now i'm doing okay it is times where i feel like i just want to run away and never come back um if i'm being completely honest um it's a transition for me a lot because even though I have two other children, they're 10 and 7. And the 10-year-old is about to be 11. So let's just say 11 and 7. I feel like this is, I feel like I'm a first-time mother. And I say that because it's been seven years since I have had to do this. And sometimes when you, like, even right now, if I had to walk y'all step by step with the newborn stage, I wouldn't be able to tell y'all because as time go by, sometimes you just forget. So it's like, just like with um, labor, people say all the time, oh, that was the worst pain in my life. I'm never doing that again. And then they have another baby. It's like you forget sometimes of that pain or what you went through. So I felt like that I was a first time mother because I'm like, I don't remember. Like, I don't remember this. Like... I feel like another thing that is an adjustment for me, one thing I can say about me and just to brag on myself, one thing I can say, it doesn't matter what comes my way. I'm going to figure it out. I don't care what it is. I'm going to figure it out. And I feel like that, um, you know, I know I'm not the only one with twins, but I feel like when you are presented with those obstacles in life, you know, as they say, God will never give you more than what you can handle. And I know me, I'm always going to figure it out. Even down to me going to the gym, that was a transition because for one, as you know, we're in a pandemic. The gym was only keeping them for an hour. They didn't start keeping them for two hours until they turned eight months. So I'm like, what am I going to do for an hour? But I made it work. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you really want something, you're going to make it work. And I'm not saying that I don't have my days where I cry. I do. I have times where their dad called me and I literally will be like, listen, I'm having a day right now. I can't talk. Like, I can't. I don't want to be on the phone. I have times where people will be calling me, my mom, my dad, my friends. People will be texting me. I will ignore everybody because I do not want to talk. So till this day, I still have days like that. But I, the one thing that I've told myself ever since I had the twins was that this will not last forever. And I had to keep telling myself that, Yvette, this will not last forever. This will not last forever. This will not last forever. That's all I had to keep telling myself because I knew that it wouldn't last forever. Just like the newborn stage, it wasn't going to last forever. And it didn't. I made it through it. And, you know, I'm not saying that it's not hard. And a lot of the times people say, oh, you make it look so easy. I'm glad that I make it look easy. I'm glad that I don't look like what I feel like. But it's plenty of days that I feel like crying. Plenty of days where I feel like giving up. Plenty of of days plenty y'all y'all just don't understand it's plenty and i'm starting to tear up lord but it's plenty of days where i just feel like saying forget all of this i'm out but i know i can't i know i can't and um whew, lord. <laughs> that's why i just I don't give myself excuses at all for anything. So when it comes down to, you know, I definitely still have work to do when it comes down to my body. But one thing about it is like, I still get my ass up every day, every day, every day and go to that gym. If I do not get up and go to the gym, it's a reason why. Like, for example, today I was not able to go because I had to take Khalil to the doctor. Then I knew I had to come home and film this video and then um, I had to work. Like, I still work 
you know, my main job. So it's things like that where it's like, okay, that is an instance where I just can't go to the gym. It's not because I'm making excuses. It's because I, I just can't. I can't do it. Not today. But even when I couldn't do it then, guess what I did? I bought me a treadmill. So I have a treadmill in my garage. So if it's ever an instance to where I cannot make it to the gym or if the gym was to shut down, I still have a backup plan. And that doesn't, that doesn't mean that you should go out and buy a treadmill. It just means whatever circumstances you have at that moment, figure it out. There's always a way out. Like there's always a way, a plan. It's always a way. I don't want to never hear that it's a way. And one of the one video I just recently watched was of Tabitha Brown. If you don't know her, she's on Instagram. She was saying that her mom had ALS, I think she said she had. And she was saying her mom um would write down things in her notepad. When she couldn't use one hand, she used the other hand. When she couldn't use no hand, she used her mouth. So figure it out. That's one thing. Don't come to me with no excuse. Cause people be coming to me and be like, oh, I really want to go to the gym, but I don't trust the gym. They care. Oh, I really want to go to the gym, but I don't have time. I don't want to hear none of that. I don't want to hear none of that. Figure it out. Figure it out. If you can't make it to the gym, work out at home. Figure it out. So that's one thing that I take pride in is that I always figure it out. The other day I had to go to the, uh, I had to go to the grocery store and I asked my mom, cause she come with me. And at that time, my intention of asking her to come with me was I just wanted my mom to come with me. But then I thought about it and I was like, yeah, because if I go to the grocery store, then I don't have anywhere to put the groceries. Like if, if, if I'm just going to the grocery store just for like one or two things or like just not a lot, I'll put the stuff in their little carriage under their stroller. But if I do have a lot of things to get, then I'll ask somebody, can they come with me? Guess what? If, if somebody can't come with me, I'll wait until their dad is home. If I don't want to do that, Instacart. If I don't want to do Instacart, Amazon Fresh. Like it's always a plan. It's always, y'all. It's always a way out. That's why it's like, I don't like when people make excuses because it's always a way. It's always a way. So that's where I'm at currently with my mental health. I am doing better than uh, other days, I will say. Whew. So that's where I'm at with my mental health. Um, what else? I also start started listening to more motivational things, whether it's podcasts, things on YouTube, reading more motivational books. I just been really feeding my mind with positive things because if you don't, you can kind of drift off to where it don't need to be. So that's what I've been doing. Um, it was a point in time where I actually bought an adult coloring book to help with my anxiety. It's just different things, like different things that made me happy, whether it's getting out of the bed and putting on my furry slippers, taking a shower, like just different things that make me feel better. Um, I definitely had to do things that make me feel better around the house because I noticed that it's just sometimes it's too much going out with twins. So I just stay in the house. So it's little things that make me feel good. Whether it's mm, writing in my journal, fixing myself some coffee, like just different things. So what I do recommend is if you are dealing with mental health problems and you're feeling depressed or you feel like that you just don't know left from right, it's like I, I recommend figuring out what makes you happy. And when I say that, I mean, it could be any little thing. Like y'all, like, let me give you a little thing. For example, this is my favorite pen. This is the Staples OptiFlow, okay? Little things like this make me happy to where when I go and journal, I can write with this pen because I just love pen. I love pens that write good. So this is something so small. So just figure out what makes you happy and go from there. And whether it's something small, um, another thing is I make sure that I still try to keep myself up. Sometimes I lack off, like when it come down to my eyebrows, I didn't get my eyebrows done for like, <laughs> like three months. Um, but one thing that I do always get done is my nails. I don't play when it comes to my nails. I have my appointments booked for a year out. So every four weeks, sometimes it'd be like five weeks. So, um, 
yeah you guys long story short i just figure it out um if you are a twin mom with well you don't have to be a twin mom but i do get a lot of dms about twin from twin moms or comments or whatever but if you are and you just need advice because i do feel like i don't know it all but i do feel like when it come down to figuring it out and not making excuses and still like doing what's best for you and i feel like sometimes us as mothers we get so lost in our kids and it's like we're not doing anything that we like that makes us feel good so in the end we're not ultimately happy so if we're not happy how can we be the mother that we need to be right so that's where i'm at currently with my mental health i definitely still have my days tomorrow i might feel like running away again but right now i'm okay <laughs> next topic is my relationship so me and their dad have been together for almost six years now and like y'all one thing about us we when it, when it came down to our relationship we would do several like we were out and about we whether it's having dinner having lunch having breakfast going out of town like we just wasn't those people that just sit in the house like we definitely enjoyed each other's time and that was definitely a battle when the twins first came along because it felt like a lack of time that we were spending with each other and even now like i i still try to make sure that we have time with each other whether that's going to eat somewhere having a date in the house downstairs while the twins are asleep you know it's like i just try to make time for those things however it is still a, a battle with that i'll say because this is something that we're not used to even when it comes down to us wanting to go out of town somewhere finding a babysitter for twins most of the time people don't want to watch two babies so that has been a struggle and yeah right now i feel like we are starting to get back to ourselves but it's never gonna be how it was before because it's you know we have children now but we are starting to get back to ourselves i will say we went to the the last time we went to the movies y'all we took the twins with us first of all kaylani Kaylani is such a good baby now, you guys. But when she gets out in public and people talk to her or it's people around that she don't know, she gets really stank. Like, she, she'll be looking at you like, who is these people? And start crying and be very whiny. So, yeah. So, that's how she was acting when we was there. And then Khalil, oh, Khalil, honey. Khalil. Khalil just cried. So, when we was in the movies, y'all, he pulled the whole pizza down off the table. So, me and their dad was looking at each other like, never again. So, that was a struggle because that wasn't the first time we took them to the movies, but that was the first time we took them to the movies when they're at the age they are now, where they're starting to, like, move around. Like, they are, they're, they are not, like, just those babies that just sleep. Now, they doing a lot. So, that was a struggle, but I do feel like that, whew, I feel like we had to come together as far as like pleasing each other and not just one person pleasing the other one or trying to fix, you know, like everything because it was a transition for both of us. Honestly, it was a, it's something that we both were not used to. So, but other than that, I'm just glad that the twins are able to see their parents, even though they're babies right now, I'm glad that they're able to see their parents loving each other and just being together, hugging on each other, kissing on each other, spending time together, because those are things that you don't notice that kids notice, but they do. And one thing that I do like is that Kaylani, she will be in her dad lap or, in, you know, land on her dad and she will be holding on to him so tight and she'll just be looking at me like, yeah, he mine. He mine now. So, yeah. So, 
you know, it's, it's a transition, but it's not impossible. If you really want it to work on both ends, it can work. So currently, you guys, currently the twins, like I said, they're eight months. They'll actually be nine months tomorrow. Um, they are very active. They both are crawling now, both sitting up now, both getting into stuff now. Ugh, they just, they just both like, whew, it's just, yeah, they're both definitely getting into stuff now. They both have their own little personalities. Um, remember I said Kehlani was such a crybaby when she was a baby. Now she barely cries. Kehlani do not cry unless something is wrong with her. That's it. That's the only time she cries. She's not crying just for you to pick her up. She just does not. She just does not. She is a good baby. She is such a good baby. So happy. So, all you know, she just smiling, laughing. And a lot of the times people don't get that side of her because if it's a stranger, she will look at you like, who are you? And she will, you will be sitting there trying to like, and she'll just look at you like, So she's definitely that baby. But as far as me as her mom and her dad and, you know, her grandparents and stuff like that, they don't have that problem. But she is such a good baby. See, and she's my first girl, you guys. So it's like, oh, it's just I love all of my kids the same. I, I honestly all of them. I don't love one more than the other. She's my first girl and I just can appreciate the fact of like getting her dressed, dressing her up, putting her little bow on. I just, I'm just like to have a little me. It's just like, I love it. Honestly, I love it. And I can't wait to, to show her how to be as a little girl and as a young lady. And I just can't wait. I want her to be so much better than what I was. One day I will tell my story as far as how I got to this point in my life, but that's going to come with a little bit of time because I don't know if I want to be that open and vulnerable because I be really like, listen, who the fuck you talk to on the internet, okay? So I don't know, you know, one day I'll get there, but I'm so ready to, I'm just happy to have a little girl. Now, I don't know nothing about doing no hell. I don't know y'all. I don't know, like I want to curl my hair. But I don't know about doing, I don't even like doing my own hair. So I'm glad that my sister lives close and my sister does hair. She loves doing hair. So, and she loved the fact that she could do her niece hair. So I just, those are things that I had to learn to not, like, don't not want to reach out to people, you know, because I'm the type of person, like, I don't want anybody to feel like that I'm depending on them for anything. So that was, even my sister doing their hair was, I don't want her to, you know, even, I'm not saying that she will, but I'm just saying, like, I don't want anybody to feel like I'm depending on them for something. But I had to learn, and I'm still learning, to allow people to help me, um, allow people to be there for me. And, I, and this has really taught me that because having twins, I definitely needed help. I could not do it all on my own. Absolutely not. Like, I could not do it all on my own. I needed that help. I, and I still do. I still do. So I'm just grateful that I do have a support system to help me because I need it. Um, but right now, um, it's, I mean, it is kind of more of a struggle because they are like moving around more and now into things. But I like that as far as Khalil. Khalil, he is just, he is very attention. He's a... He's a needy baby. I'll say that. He is a crybaby at the moment. I'm hoping that he just grows out of it. But Khalil, he wants to be all up under you. He wants me to kiss all on his little face. He just loves the attention. He just love it. He it, At times, that is how I have to put him to sleep. By kissing all on his face, rubbing his head. He just wants that attention. And, you know, as I said in the beginning, he was the one that was quiet and didn't, didn't do any crying. Kehlani was the crybaby. Now the roles have reversed. Um, also, Khalil, he's not like Kehlani when we go out in public. He will still look at you like, who are you? But I feel like he, will, he won't cry if somebody pick him up or something like that. Kehlani, she ain't going for that. Like, if she don't know you, 
uh-uh, get up out my face. But Khalil is just a little bit different. So I will say with having twins, you know, they are, they, they're their own person. They have their own personality. And yeah, it's just, it's, it's sometimes I really do look at it and be like, man, I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed because just the fact of that I carry them inside of me, push them out and they are healthy babies. And, you know, I'm able to be a loving mother to them. They have a loving father. They have a loving family. Like I'm just blessed in all of those areas. I'm not going to say that it's times where I don't forget that because I do have to remind myself at times when it started getting overwhelming that it's still a blessing and that this is only, this is a season. It's not going to last forever. They're going to grow up and it's going to get easier. And I'm also grateful that my kids um, and, you know, my kids are able to be there to help because my 10 year old, almost 11 year old, he loves helping. Even my seven year old, like they just love helping. And the twins dad, he has a child outside of us and he loves the twins so much. He helps so much. So they just have a loving family. And I'm just grateful for that. I really am. And you guys, I just want this video to be, I guess, a testimony of if you are having twins, if you are pregnant with twins, don't think it's the end of the world. It will be okay. We're going to get through this together. My twins are only nine months tomorrow, but they're only nine months and it's still a daily struggle at times, but I'm getting through it. And that's all I can do. I'm taking it day by day by day by day by day. Like, I can't sit here and try to stress about how they're going to be when they turn one or two, like the toddler stage. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be wanting to pull my hair out. But guess what? I'm going to document all that for y'all. So you ain't got to worry about it. So that's it, you guys. I don't feel like I have anything else that I want to say. I'm pretty sure I'm probably going to film a video like this in the future because I know things will change. I know people probably will want more advice or more of my experience as they get a little older, the toddler stages, things like that. But um, I mean, right now, I just feel like with the stage they're at right now, the most thing that I struggle with is bath time because I just, I did just recently put up a bath time routine and even since that video, and that video was recent, even since that video, you guys, things have changed. Now they don't even want to sit in the tub. So bath time is a sweat, okay? <laughs> like yesterday, their dad gave them a bath and I was like, babe, you didn't put nothing in their hair. And he was like, listen, they were stressing me out and I believe him because, listen, they don't want to, you know how like when babies get to the point where they can't walk yet, but they want to stand up on everything. Like they want to pull themselves up. Like, can you please sit down? Because you keep trying to stand up and if you fall back in this tub, then you're going to be crying because you're going to feel like you're drowning. Like, it's just little stuff like that. I be like, Lord, I do not look forward to bath time because they be all over the place. And then when it comes down to feeding them, you guys, just things like that that you don't think about. The fact that I have to feed, like now they're trying to get introdu introduced to table food, having to feed two of them. And then Khalil act like he doesn't want to take the food. Kelani, she will beat me up if I don't hurry up and put the spoon in her mouth. So it's just, it's just little stuff like that. But I'm grateful. I'm grateful to be going through it, honestly. I love my babies so much. And even though, you know, it's a struggle, but I'm just grateful. That's all I can say. I'm grateful. I love them to death. And honestly, I ask myself all the time, if I had the chance to go back and have the option to just have a single baby and not twins, I would pick the twins every time. So that's how I'm going to end this video, you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I gave you more insight of how I'm doing, how life has been since the twins. If you are a twin mom, you know what to do. Comment down below. Let's chat below. I do respond to every comment that I get. So if you are a twin mom, let's chat below. I send you love. I send you light. I send you positivity. I send you grace. Just know that it's not going to be perfect. You're not always going to be happy. It's going to be times where you want to run away. You might run away, but make sure you come back. Okay. That's it for this video. Don't forget to subscribe, you guys. And I will see you all in my next video.